If we're, you're, do we have I more think, people? We have enough people, Scott? Uh, we now have at least four, so we technically are okay. Uh, I do have the uh, American flag background um, in case um, I can put that on the screen if we do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, that'd be great. Well, then under that, I'll call the I'll call the order of the Service Transportation Committee meeting for Tuesday, April 6. Please um, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, the pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, the United States. States of America and to, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, do we want to do we want to mention the uh, the roll call of who's who's on? Yes, I think that would be a good idea. Um, if I may, we we have a list of members that are already subscribed that are already on our roster for this committee, but we want to make sure that we account for any other attendees that have joined us, having the ability to weigh in for for votes, provided that they. Are representing one community and that they aren't you know an additional person for the community so with that said i think we're going to look at the the list of who's listed as a participant in the zoom meeting and uh, call them out and make sure that we record their attendance today so that when the roll call votes come they'll be able to vote. okay um tom schmidt and jeff hewitt are here from shareable and uh, my assistant, or Fl Floorbaum, is going to make sure that we have the list of all the names. So maybe, Floor, if you could just chime in to confirm as soon as somebody says that they're here. Okay, thank you. And I got um, both Tom and thank you. Okay. Dean Button, City of Hammond. Got it. Thank you. George Topple, Union Township Trustee. Thank you. Mike Jabo, City of Valparaiso. Thank you. What about Brian Blazak? I just want to remind everybody that they're muted, so. I'm <clears throat> Town of St. John. Is that Gerald? Brian Blazak. Okay, thank you. And uh, T Timothy Warner, I see. What community does he belong to? No community, just an interested party. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, great to have you. Just wanna make sure. Okay, I think that's all that I currently see. Does anybody else see a name that we might have missed? Okay, with that, uh, Mr. Terry, you can continue. Okay. Um, at at this time, the next item is a public comment on agenda items. I don't know if anyone has any comment for agenda items. If, if not, we'll move into the next item is the minutes of the January 5th, 2021 meeting. Uh, you should have that in your packet. At, there's action requested and approval. Dean Button move to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Hammond. Mike Jabo seconds. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second on the minutes. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Aye. No, 
No mo no oppose. Um, make note that it was approved by all in attendance. Next item is next item is resolution 21-06 is performance measure. That was on pages three to five of your um, of your packet. Uh, Scott, you want to make sure. a comment on that? Yes. Yeah, so, so resolution 2106 is a resolution adopting or actually it's adjusting performance measures for the areas of pavement condition, bridge condition, and freight performance targets. So the Indiana Department of Transportation adjusted the four-year targets for these measures back in October, and that triggered an, a 180-day clock for, for us at NERPC to decide to either accept those adjustments or set our own four-year targets for these. These are federally required performance measures. So NERPC staff's recommendation in resolution 2106 is to accept INDOT's adjustments to these four-year targets. And we have now in this resolution listed in this table on, I believe it's page five of your agenda packets, uh, what the changes are. So there's five performance measures that are being adjusted at the state level. The percent of interstate pavements in good condition, their original four-year target was 84.24% by 2021, and the adjusted target is 50% by 2021. Now keep in mind that this is actually due to some kind of measurement error I've been told about when they were setting the targets originally. So we're not saying that our interstates are gonna be a lot less good across the state in you know this year when we collect the data, uh, but that's just what we've been informed. That's why they made the adjustment so that they're not held accountable to an impossible to meet standard using the, the data collection method that's been approved. Uh, the next performance measure that's being changed is the percent of non-interstate national highway system pavements in good condition. The original four-year target for the data collection this year was 78.71%, and that's being changed to 40%, what they expect to see. Again, a data collection issue. Uh, the next performance measure that's being adjusted is the percent of national highway system bridge area in good condition. The four-year target originally was 48.32% by this year, and it's just slightly being adjusted to 47.2%. Uh, the percent of national highway system bridge area in poor condition, the four-year target was 2.63% by this year, and that's being changed to 3.1% by this year. And then finally, the truck travel time reliability index, the original four-year target was 1.24, and that's being changed to 1.30. So those are the, the only five performance measures that the Indiana Department of Transportation has proposed adjusting. And they're asking us for our recommendation that we accept those adjustments. And this, this committee's action today will then also go before the Technical Planning Committee later today before being deliberated upon by the full commission on April 15th. So with that, if there are any further questions on this matter, uh, feel free to ask me before I turn it back over to the chair for to entertain a motion. Scott, Dean Button, uh, just for clarity, the staff is recommending we approve these changes. Yes, that is staff's recommendation. Thank you. I have no questions. Any other questions for Scott? If not, I'll entertain a motion to pass resolution 2106. So moved, Mike Javo, City of Valparaiso. Dean Button, second, City of Hammond. We have a motion, we have a second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. <laughs> Next item is. Uh, Resolution 21-08 is the move Northwest Indiana and here, uh, Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So resolution 2108 is the move NWI adherence for, which is the congestion management process that NERPC adopted last September, 2020. And this is a federally required product that any major capacity adding projects that are proposed to being added to either our long range plan, which is NWI 2050, or our transportation improvement program, in which case we're about to adopt 
another transportation improvement program that these significant projects be found to adhere to the congestion management process. Now, obviously that's not every single project. That's a very small subset of projects that need to demonstrate adherence. After staff looked at all of the projects that came in with the uh, NOFA application, the Notice of Funding Availability application that we just went through, we, the staff found that there are only two projects that are brand new that needed to demonstrate adherence to the con MOVE NWI congestion management process. And those two projects are the Town of St. John's Pine Avenue Gap Extension Project between 93rd Avenue and 101st Avenue and Porter County's Willow Creek Road Extension from State Road 130 to US 30. Keep in mind the segment from 700 North to, US, to State Road 130 has already been found to demonstrate adherence. So this is just phases three and four of that project that have to newly demonstrate adherence. So given that resolution 2108 is staff's recommendation that these two projects be found to adhere to the MOVE NWI congestion management process and the documentation of how they adhere is also in your packets on uh, pages eight through 11. And you can see, and I'll go through them briefly, uh, the way that the, the town of St. John's Klein Avenue gap extension project or gap project between 93rd Avenue and 101st Avenue is demonstrates adherence is by looking at the travel demand models projection of vehicle hours traveled reduced in the build scenario versus the no build scenario that's on table one that you can find on page 12 of your agenda packets. And you can see that the proposed reduction on of vehicle hours traveled expected to be res result from the project is a 6.3% on the nearby arterials in the area. And so therefore, because that number is greater than 5%, MOVE NWI says that any projection of vehicle hours traveled reduced on roads within five, two miles of the project above 5% is found to adhere to MOVE NWI. So that's the documentation for that project. For the Willow Creek Road project, which you can find uh, the documentation on later on in the materials, specifically on table two on uh, page 12, shows that the, this is actually from the NERPSI Regional Corridor Study that we adopted back in 2016. And you can see that the, the projected vehicle hours travel reduction just on, for example, some of these roads is far greater than 5%, uh, 475 West, which is Sedley between State Road 130 and US 30, uh, 450 West between 600 North and State Road 130, 74.15%. So those roads are within uh, two miles of the project area. So that documentation supports that the vehicle hours traveled reduced would also exceed 5% as a result of the project. So staff's recommendation is that these two projects be found to adhere to the MOVE NWI congestion management process by virtue of their projected vehicle hours traveled reductions. Uh, if there, is, are there any questions for me before I ask the chair to entertain a motion? Again, this action today for you would also go to the technical planning committee later today and then to the full commission on April 15th. Question, Scott, you do this more than most of us in this room. What do you find to be a significant improvement range? Now, I mean, I, I think these are both great projects. I'm not questioning that, but this is more for educational purposes. I mean, I, I'm i hesitant to say, because obviously when you think about, I mean, if you spent all the money in the world, obviously you could you know, find reductions potentially. Uh, so I think that there has to be, when you say best or, or good, I would say, you know, from a purely like vehicle hours traveled and performance metric standpoint, I think anything above 5% is really outstanding. It's actually not that common uh, to find. A lot of our projects are more in the maybe 2% range if I had to just um, venture a guess. So I, that's why the, the bar is relatively high. I mean, 5% is definitely good. I mean, a very good project might be in the double digit percentage reductions, um, but that's very rare when it comes to this. Thank you for putting that in perspective. Appreciate it. Scott, thank you for your uh, very thorough um, information on and explaining that to us. Does anyone else have any other questions for Scott? If not, I'll entertain a motion for resolution 21-08.
So moved, Mike Javo. Seconded by Dean Button of Hammond. We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any objection? Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks again, Scott. Uh, next item is uh, staff updates. Uh, Scott, any um, staff updates? Okay, so just a, just a couple of updates for you today. So NERPC staff is in the process of building a performance-based planning and programming data dashboard using a Tableau software, which is a vendor that we just purchased a license for. And we expect to be able to populate some kind of a website that'll be linked to our main website where you can hover over performance metrics and basically create some graphics of some of, some of the performance metrics that I briefly touched on today that were federally required, for example, from resolution 2106, you'll be able to see how the, you know, for example, the truck travel time reliability index changed over time based on the last few years. So metrics like that will be very, I guess the right word would be uh, uh, very customizable for, for your viewing pleasure and it'll just be easier to digest a lot of information. So that's a, a major project that staff is working on right now using all the data sources that we have. We hope to get, we just recently purchased the license for this. So it'll probably be relatively soon when things start populating. Um, we've been very impressed with what we've been able to do so far. For example, looking at uh, congestion scans by time of day or by hour of the day, which is, has definitely been something that's refreshing to see. Um, also on, another major announcement, and this will be touched on at the technical planning committee later today for any of you who might be attending. Um, I don't know if you are aware, but in the, uh, Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act, which was one of the uh, coronavirus relief laws that was passed actually in December of 2020. So it was the second CARES Act, so to speak, of coronavirus assistance uh, that they appropriated 5.3 million additional dollars for group one for transportation projects and 206,000 uh, for group two. So NERPC staff will be looking at the existing NOFA list and our, our TIP kind of list of projects that are further out and trying to move them up. The, the catch with the additional appropriation money is that it has to be completely obligated by the end of federal fiscal year 2024. So only projects who can have all of the sign-offs and all of the uh, reimbursement purchase orders by September, so it's actually September 25th of 2024, will be eligible possibly to be moved up. So NERFC staff is trying to fairly figure out a way to uh, consult with the, the projects who might be good candidates to move up into that category. And that would also then unlock some funds later on in our tip years for, for other projects. So again, I don't have a whole lot of details about how this will play out exactly other than to update this committee that staff is working behind the scenes. And I know my colleague, uh, Charles Bratsky, will be making an announcement at the Technical Planning Committee later today with a little bit more details about how that'll work. But NERPC staff has been informed that we're gonna be approaching project sponsors from our various committees uh, for possible candidate projects to move forward. So again, it's not a, not a ton of, of extra money, but it is some definitely something on the table there. Um, and, and again, there are 80-20 funds from what we've heard. Uh, so with that, are, are there any questions. I mean, I'm probably not going to be able to answer them super well right now, but. That's great news, Scott. Yep. Hey, Scott, when do you guys think you guys will go in person again? Well, there hasn't been anything like completely concrete about that, but we're pretty sure that by, by May, uh, we've, you know, been informed that the governor will unlikely be extending the uh, emergency order that allows us to have the virtual meetings after the month of April from, from what we've been told. So again, we don't really know for sure, but our guess is probably by the May round of meetings, uh, they would likely be in, in person. Thank you. Nothing is certain until we see you know, something. Else.
Any uh, any other questions just about the staff uh, updates? Just a quick comment for everybody. I, I saw that the parliamentarian in, in Congress cleared the way for the to move forward with the $10, $10 trillion funding of infrastructure. Uh, we'll see what the, what the government does with that, what the feds do with that. But I, I would expect that we will probably be seeing a good amount more money coming our way uh, in the near future, at least this year sometime, I think. Yeah, great, neat, great to hear. Uh, thanks for that update. Any other comments or questions from anyone? Scott, the technical committee meeting starts at 10, correct? Correct. If no other questions or comment, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hi. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, Scott, thank you. Uh, meetings adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody.